Photography Daily. Today, Scott Shillam from the photography movement in the UK talks about our mental health and he can't quite believe the numbers. I mean, there's this, there's this silly number of one in four people, you know, suffer from poor mental health throughout their lifetime. I think it's, I think it's one in one, quite frankly. Hello and welcome to Photography Daily. I have a question to ask and it's quite personal. Shift uncomfortably, if you will, or require. How are you? No, really, how are you? Honestly, it's been odd, hasn't it? And I promise you, as a man who spent his 20s in broadcasting and a fair amount of oddity, much of it not in total sobriety, I couldn't begin to top this oddness I've been experiencing decades later. If I had to name my oddest experience to date, it would be in the Balearics in the early 2000s when I was in a helicopter destined to bump into a cliff pushed in by a brisk ocean sea breeze when out of nowhere the wind changed without explanation according to air traffic control and with which i don't know 50 meters to go somebody upstairs said it's okay let it go you're all right son crack on stuff changed that day and it left me with an understanding of the word odd i'd not experienced in quite the same fashion previously so yes i've experienced odd but nothing quite so odd as this you know what I'm going to take you on a personal journey today and I'd invite your responses in the email back for inclusion in the Friday Photo Walk show this week. What's been bad about this odd exactly? Well, where do I even begin? There's the crushing photography business blow, of course. Unexpected and very unwelcome loan. You'll always receive honesty from me here and feeling of total hopelessness in the face of something I can't see to fight. What else? Where do I even begin? There's the crushing photography business blow, of course. Unexpected and very unwelcome loan. You'll always receive honesty from me here. And feeling of total hopelessness in the face of something I can't see to fight. Honestly, if you've seen Groundhog Day, it pretty much sums up how I feel about this period in history. I remember New Year's Eve 2020 watching a fresh decade being heralded in by Jules Holland, which for all our listeners outside the UK is a musical TV epic that airs every New Year's Eve, presented by a legendary musician called Jules Holland. On-trend presentation, just perfect. And there was I thinking, oh, new decade, this is good, new start, new hopes, blah, blah, blah. Within what? Two and a bit months, it became obvious things were about to change. Not for the welcome. Sure, we thought we could maybe dodge this incoming, as we have before, but then it was with us bearing down on us, invading the news so pervasive it actually had the audacity to knock Brexit off the front pages. Friends in the UK, remember that thing called Brexit? And then in March, Boris said, stay indoors. And the business wheels fell off. Well, not so much fell off, but were knocked from the axles by something seemingly pneumatic, and we went into lockdown. A month into lockdown, I thought one day, for some reason, to send a text next door to find out how stuff was. Are you okay? I said. Within five minutes came a reply. No, not really. We've just had some very bad news. And that was it. Not a word after. Days later, I heard the news. My next door neighbour's son had taken his life 120 miles north on his own one night. Now, you can't directly blame his demise on Covid, but if you know what I do now, you, well, you probably can. That's the year this has been, and it's highlighted something that for many you otherwise wouldn't necessarily be required to consider. Mental health. Ah, mental health. I'm alright. I don't need to think about that kind of stuff, Neil. It affects other people, right? Not me. I could switch off now and listen to a previous episode. Well, maybe. But that's why I asked how you are. Help is a difficult thing to ask for when you can't physically see an injury. If you have a sprained ankle, broken arm, black eye even, these things, well, they're easy to accept. But if you're wearing an issue that affects the mind, well, I can't see that. And nor can anybody else. From the outside, well, you look well enough to me. But it's the inside I can't comprehend. I don't know that that smile is quite simply hiding a contradictory emotion. The one thing I learned from my next-door neighbour this year was to ask a question that involves three words, how are you, but then add those two more. No, really, how are you? And I'd like to introduce you to an organisation today that asks that question of photographers. 
Scott Schillam, co-founder of the photography movement, a movement born on the back of losing his own twin brother, who took his life in 2015, has, with his close friend and colleague Steve Wallington, built a platform for photographers to communicate their feelings safely. The photography movement is many things, and I'd invite you to visit thephotographymovement.com to investigate further a portal that talks to us as photographers during these times that we may need a little help. Scott, the ethos of your movement, what is it? Uh, very, very simple. It's, it's three words. It's photography, yep. conversation, well-being. And the idea is it's a sort of a virtuous circle. So photography has got proven therapeutic benefits. Yeah. It's about being in, in, in the moment. You know, you don't accidentally take a photograph on your phone unless, of course, it goes off in your pocket. But mm. the very fact that you are taking a photograph, and it doesn't matter what that photograph actually turns out to be, you have made a conscious decision to do that. And that is your photograph, and you've created it. And in that small moment of time when you were looking through the viewfinder or the, or the camera lens, um, you have been thinking about that and that sort of process. Sometimes you might be thinking quite deeply about it. Sometimes it might just be a spontaneous capture of something that, that you've seen. That is, is quite a, a therapeutic thing to do. The other bit around the conversation is that the idea is that photography, and a, we all know a picture speaks a thousand words, but the idea of a photograph is as, as a talking point, a discussion point, so that it sparks a conversation around it. And hopefully the conversation enables people to talk about their feelings and that it's got this sort of um, this virtuous circle that leads to an element of well-being. Now, obviously, clearly, that, that can't be for everything. But on balance, we feel that is it's a positive yeah. it's a positive thing. And how do photographers become involved? I, I, I've spoken to a number of photographers who, who echo exactly what you said about that moment. Um, there was a Canadian paramedic, for example, that I talked to recently. He was saying you know, he didn't understand how it happened, but the moment he had the camera in his hand, the post-traumatic stress disorder that he was being treated for seemed to evaporate. And it wasn't what he called a miracle cure, but it certainly was mm. an assistance in, in, in his life in a large respect. So how does it work with the organisation and photographers coming to you? Uh, we have an Instagram page. We like Instagram. Um, uh, social media in general, um, I think, has rightly so, has, has got a reputation for being quite toxic, especially amongst uh, teenagers. Yep. Um, and especially girls. I have two teenage daughters myself and I can see the negative pull of it, but but it does have some positivity to it. And we, and we like Instagram um, because actually people that take photography largely are taking it for positive reasons yes. and we find that that's a, it's a positive place to be. So we have an Instagram page. We run some sort of online exhibitions yeah. so we just ask people for submissions we might have a topic area that we're talking around um, but also trying to feature photographers who have a backstory and want to through the creative process um, talk positively about photography so that a few people that, that that we've connected with through through the movement who are very accomplished photographers yeah. we've, we've featured them on, on the feed but we want to try and have something that's got lasting impact. And we are actually just about to launch a, a project. And we've only really found out in the, in, in the last week that we have, uh, we're going to make this happen. But we have about to launch something called Show and Tell. Right. And it's going to be a series of, and a short series, four or five video workshops which are going to talk about various aspects of photography, including the process of photography. Um, it's going to actually culminate in people submitting imagery, which we will then post in a digital gallery space. It's mainly aimed at 11 to 16 year olds. So it's the sort of the lockdown generation, I guess, that we want to try and sort of tap into. Helping a younger generation and giving them safe harbour to communicate and share creative works and thoughts is, is very precious to the photography movement. And I'll quote from their About page. 
Through a carefully curated program of exhibitions, workshops and talks, the photography movement enables and encourages people to compose, capture and share images that tell the story of how they feel. Breaking the silence around the sensitive subject of mental health, the movement also raises awareness and funds for charity partners. And one of those interests is the Let's Talk campaign, which is on letstalkcampaign.com, a frankly outstanding work by Charlie Clift and Kate Forrester. Put unashamedly simply now so that you can easily picture this, photographer Charlie Clift invited portrait sitters to be face-painted beautifully by artist Kate Forrester, who drew people's most difficult inner thoughts on their faces, designed through publicity to encourage others to open up about their own mental health. Think about it. If you had to share words that expressed your more troubled thoughts so that they may be etched upon your face for a portrait photograph, which words would you choose? Or maybe, somehow, your face would remain clean of any marks. The Let's Talk campaign, which again I'll include links for, was a potent set of images and interviews worn on the sitter's skin. Yes. Um, I watched uh, the video that accompanied that on Let's Talk's uh, website, and there were some, some extraordinary people... I mean, everybody's extraordinary, I know, but um, in terms of familiarity that were prepared to come forward and talk about it, weren't they? Yeah, amazing. And Charlie Clift, just uh, it was a, just the most amazing idea. Simple, really, mm. really simple. Oh, striking. So, so striking. And, um, you know, hats off to him. He he had his struggles, had to drop out of university, did a sort of, you know, a, a, a gap year, went back and finished his degree. Um but you know he he was he was suffering from from clinical depression. Yeah. Um, but has now become a, an extremely accomplished portrait photographer. Does a lot of work for the Sunday Times and had this had this amazing idea. And um, he found out through the ecosystem, the photography movement had obviously seen my backstory. So um, asked if we would consider being subjects for it. And 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 the Let's Talk campaign was really exactly what the photography movement is. Mm. Photography, conversation, well being. You know, that's it. Yeah. It fitted so perfectly, didn't it? It it really did. And Charlie then said, Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna interview you. I'm gonna talk to you about, you know, you and um and then that's going to form the basis of, of making the decision about what the words look like on your face, how we're gonna do it, what the emphasis is. And um, we ended up talking on the phone for about an hour, and and you know I was I was really amazed that uh, the empathy that he had, and that he was able to sort of talk to me. I didn't know his backstory at the time. I really didn't right. know it. Right. It's only subsequently I I found it out, and that's my bad, really, because I I didn't really ask him. You know, I didn't I didn't think to well, ask. Maybe him you weren't you time. weren't perhaps expecting it. I should think, and that's the thing about mental. Yeah, health. people might talk to you about your mental health, and you sort of listen to their regard and don't necessarily feel that they may may be suffering from the the same in some way. You absolutely don't. And I think when you when you sort of realise that, I mean, there's this there's this silly number of one in four people, you know, suffer from poor mental health throughout their lifetime. I think it's, I think it's one in one, quite frankly. I mean, if you if you if you start talking about well, what levels they are, it doesn't really matter. It, it's it's uh, you know nobody goes through life sailing through it having the the you know the most wonderful experience. It's just it's, life is a roller coaster, Absolutely. and it will give you peaks and troughs, and there will be times when you are feeling very very low, and um, it happens to ev- it happens to everybody. But the 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 process then for for um after the conversation was then working with this amazing lettering artist Kate Forrester. Yes, she is amazing. Oh, um and we went to Charlie's studio and uh I was there for about 3 hours. So I didn't know until I arrived there what he had chosen and how it was going to look, but he said I oh, you talk about being being just flat. He said that you 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 reference this a number of times in the conversation. Yeah. He said so. I want to emphasise the, the the just flat. I want to sort of pull that out. And he said, and I want to do it almost like a scarf around your face. That's exactly what it looked like. It was a mask, yeah. wasn't it? It was almost yeah. a, mu- a muting of being able to say what you wanted to say yeah. publicly. And um, 
and he sort of you know and I said wow I said well, yeah okay well let's you know let's let's do it and then sat there with Kate and obviously Kate's painting my face for nearly two hours and then Charlie would come over and he'd say oh no I'd like that to be a bit more I mean he was you know really really looking at this and he could he, he could envisage exactly what he wanted to capture quite extraordinary really and of course I didn't see it until Kate's finished with it you know and I was like whoa that that's powerful powerful mm. of course I, I saw it in reverse in the in the mirrors it wasn't until I actually saw the the in-camera stuff that I and, and with the lighting and everything that I just I was blown away it was extraordinary work and I'll put the links to that on the show notes too we've communicated at some length I know about mental health of late but uh, I think it's important to talk about much more than simply f-stops and focal lengths though that has its place too Actually, I've just finished writing an essay about the joy of 85 millimetres. Get me. I'm sure Mr Norris and the English department in my higher school education hadn't really planned that the legacy of studying Shakespeare and Chaucer in such fine detail could be a fluidity of expression over the pros and cons of choosing a, a prime lens over a zoom. If you want to hear more of Scott and the photography movement, then there's a fuller account on another show I present, this time with Kevin Mullins on the Fujicast. I think the awareness of mental health is important and the message needs to reach other fresh ears. And if you listen to both titles, fear not, there'll be a little crossover, but certainly new material atop. I received an email that I thought would uh, add the perfect tale for today's show from Lenny. Happy for me to share his first name, but not his surname. I've listened to your episodes with the portrait per day man, John Manell and Tim Johnston, and I just wanted to say these two guests were so inspirational, as I, like them, suffer from anxiety, yet can hold it together when I'm taking pictures. With camera in hand, it's like my superpower. I wonder how many more of your listeners find the same. Keep talking about the things not usually talked about on photo podcasts. Regards, Lenny. And that's it for today. Keep sending in your emails following what you hear, what photography means to you, and anything that you feel you'd like to share with regards photography, like Lenny just there, to studio at photographydaily.show, studio at photographydaily.show. Make sure you visit the website for links and news of upcoming specials. You can join the mailing list there. If you've been enjoying the shows, there's a way you can help us, actually. Those podcast player reviews are absolutely fantastic. And thank you also to those in Twitter, especially those that I see each day sharing the show's website address. It doesn't go over my head, you know. I really do see them, and I appreciate it. Music in the show from artlist.io, and I look forward to photographing with you, hearing from you, and talking with you tomorrow. Photography Daily is a Loading Zone production.